Tonight we're going to look at a real national day of prayer. Now I know there's been times in this country there's been national days of prayer. But we're going to look at the biblical count. Because we can't just, you know, Lord bless us, Lord make us great, Lord protect us, Lord give us this, Lord be this, Lord do that. And, you know, because we're Americans and God bless America. That's not going to work. We're going to have a national day of prayer. We've got to have a biblical national day of prayer. And I ask you to follow along in Daniel chapter 9, starting verse 4. And follow along. Daniel 9, starting verse 4, he says, I will set my face unto the Lord God. Any nation must set their face to the Lord God of Daniel. The God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel. The Lord Jesus Christ. Exodus 20, verse 3, Thou shalt not Thou shalt have no gods before me. As a national day of prayer in a nation or any nation that has religions. For a national day of prayer, you can't pray to Mary. Allah is not going to help you. Buddha is dead. Esther or Easter is finished. And evolution is not going to make it better. As my rate this this to the world of nations who want to get right with God and to America, America is a nation of gods. And when America seeks out to have a day of prayer, everybody get together in unity. Ecumenical union that God is not going to listen to. God is not going to listen to the Catholics. He's not going to listen to the Lutheran. He's not going to listen to the Baptists. He's not going to listen to the Catholics. He's not going to listen to anybody who prays to anyone but God of the Bible. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him, God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. So let's get a nation together. Let's pray to God on National Day of Prayer. And what about the atheists? What are you going to do with the atheists? They don't believe in God. What about the Catholics? Their God is a different God from the Lutherans. The Lutheran God is different from the, from the Muslims. The Muslim God is different from... The Jehovah Witness, the Jehovah Witness God is different from the morons. And the morons God is different from Mary Baker Eddie's God. And the Baker Barry Eddie's What are you going to do? Where are you going to stand? When you're going to pray to God as a nation, you're not going to come together in unity of all faith. Because God's not going to listen. Job 35, 13, surely God will not hear vanity. The prayer beads are vanity. Oh, Mary, full of grapes is vanity. Our Father art in heaven, that's vanity. That's in the Bible. Yeah, that's a, rightly divided in the Bible. That's a prayer of the disciples when they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. That wasn't Christian. There were no Christians around. First John 5, 7. For there are but three that bear written record in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And if you've got a perverted Bible, you don't have a King James Bible, that verse is either removed or has been changed, and you don't have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or Jesus Christ. How are you going to pray to God for your nation when you don't have the proper Bible, you don't have the proper Word? You've got to have the God of the King James Bible. Other Bibles add and subtract to the Word of God. You've got to have the God of Israel. What are you going to do with the KKK? 
You're going to get the KKK, the, 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 the Christian organization of burning flags and hating Jews. You're not going to get them together. God said about the Jew, I'll curse them that curse you. The KKK is a curse organization by God in the word of God. Don't you get the KKK to pray with you. What about the, the black people? Black lives matter. What about the Jewish lives? What about the Polish lives? What about the Mexican lines? What about the European lines? You got to have the God of the Christian church, and I mean Christian, those that have been bought and saved by the blood of Jesus Christ alone. Again, Job 35, 13, Surely God will not hear vanity, neither will the Almighty regard it. God's not going to hear the prayer of God's small G-O-D-S and goddesses. Wicca new age movement god's not going to hear those words. and yet in america in the world we get everybody together and god i ain't listening i ain't listening you see the people think you know what i think what i believe what my thoughts are god has to agree with me <laughs> no you know daniel says to seek by prayer and supplication to seek is to go in search or quest of, to look for, to search for, by going from place to place. Now, you're going to get definitions out of Webster's 1828 Dictionary. You're not going to get in the Greek. You're not going to hear in the Greek from me. You're going to hear Webster. You're going to get an English meaning dictionary for an English Bible that God does have press one for English. You got to search and seek God. If you want prayer time with God, you got to go into church to pray. You got to be at home and pray. You got to be in your automobile and pray. You got to be alone seeking God. Whenever time allows you to seek God in prayer. Are you typing at work and wow. I haven't gone. I haven't heard that name since we went to school. Start praying. Oh, I'm, I, I, that, that 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 person in church. Instead of gossiping, pray for him. Oh, but we're supposed to have one day of prayer. No, we're supposed to have 365 days and 366 of the leap year. See, that's the problem. We're going to have one national day of prayer. <laughs> and then for, what about the rest? Like this country. We got one day for Thanksgiving God. Prayer. Prayer in the general sense is the act of asking for favor. And particularly with earnestness. We don't demand God, though, though there's an earnest. God, you must give it to me. You know, God, we have rights got to give it to me it's not a right we don't deserve it you know what, what many people think about a prayer life is God's always going to say yes but God may say no and God also answers not now and we don't say when it comes to prayer God ought to God must it talks about a favor again, you know, uh, people, I'm looking for a wife. So Proverbs 18.22, my prayer life, whosoever finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor of the Lord. So God, prayer is favor. I'm seeking a favor that in your scriptures. Supplications, Daniel says, with an S. It's a petition. It's an earnest request it is earnest and serious and we're going to have a day of prayer everybody get it's got to be serious friend if you got a serious wound on your body you don't just go to the doctor once you may have to go to the doctor two three four times one day of a national prayer reaching out god that's not earnest that's not serious Come on, don't you have something in your life as a born-again Bible-believing Christian that you pray every day? 
I pray for my mother every day. She's saved. She's got MS. I pray for the Lord to protect her and guide her every day. What would I say about my mom? I'm going to pray one day a year. Nonsense. It, Daniel also says fasting, sackcloth, and ashes. Fasting is the act of abstaining from food. Have you dieted yourself before God that you're earnest of petitioning God? I'm going to go on a diet to lose weight. I'm going to go on a diet because it'll be healthy. I'm going to go on a diet because of my diseases. Are you? Have you ever been on a diet for God? As a diabetic medical condition, I can usually go one to three, four, or five hours on a fast. I got to check my sugar, you know, check myself. I go as far as I can. Have you ever dieted yourself for answer prayer? One day of a national prayer, and I don't think they fast. Then it's not that serious. Because when you say, I am not eating anything, I am going to starve myself, I am going to tell the flesh, no, you're serious about a prayer. But you see the prayer that Americans want, and Christians. I want God to make me feel God. I want to make God make me wonderful. I want to be a super. I want to have great days. I want to have wonderful. I want to have riches. I want to have fame. I want it all. Give it to me now, God. Ah, uh, sackcloth. I'm old enough to know and remember potatoes being delivered in sackcloth. And I remember I would go into that bag of toma uh, tomatoes, potatoes, and then, ew, that stuff is <laughs> itching. It's a cloth which sacks are made of. It's a coarse cloth. The word chiefly used in scripture to denote a cloth or garment worn in mourning. You're upset. Your tears. Sorrow. Distress or mortification. Associated with mourning for the dead and especially with public expression and humiliation and penance in view of some natural misfortune and presence of impending. When was the last time a national day of prayer that you see people sorrow and in sackcloth? Well, we're Christians. Well, we're, we're on this side of Calvary. You can't be serious about your prayer? I tell you, there are times I went into my bedroom, I closed the bedroom door, I took off all my clothes, I knelt down before God and I prayed. How's that? Ashes. To repent in sackcloth and ashes or lie down amongst ashes when an external sign of self-afflicted for sin and grief under misfortune. When you get ashes and you put them on your head, or they put them down on the ground, you kneel in those ashes. Were you ashes to ashes, dust to dust? I am in ashes. I am in this desire troubles. Many people don't turn to God in prayer until their fortune and their material goods have been turned to ashes. To sprinkle with or sit in ashes was a mark or token of grief, humiliation, and penance. You're not going to get that in pride, America. I'm proud to be American. And when we get to the national thing of prayer and all that with fasting, sackcloth, and ashes, we come down to one point. It is not a happy, joyful celebration, a fun, entertaining moment. He says, I prayed unto the Lord, my God. It's not your God. It's not their God. It's my God. You, you know, what are you going to do with Allah? What are you going to do with the Pope? What are you going to do with... Because that's not God. You're going to get a group of people with, with small G-O-D-S and goddesses 
And you're going to get some who do believe in God. You're going to get them together. Your personal Savior, your relationship with God himself, the God of the Bible. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Not the European God. Not the Asian God. Not the Middle Eastern God. Not the American God. God will not listen to your prayers of a nation or people that God is not their God. When that nation has other gods and goddesses. Your public school system's got prayer mat and they turn towards mega and they get on their mat and they practice yoga and they practice Native American customs and all that. And God ain't involved in that. On April 25th, 1987, Jesus Christ became my God, my Savior, my Lord. If you're not saved and you have never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you are not a child of God. God is not your God. You are an enemy of God. You are an enemy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. When you have never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, so you're going to get a group of people who reject Jesus Christ, who reject God, who reject the Word of God, who reject. And then God's going to listen to you? Listen, it does no good for the heathen and Jews who are unsaved, because the unsaved Jew is as worse as the heathen. Unsaved of any nation to pray. When Jeremiah 11, 14 says, Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or prayer for them. For I will not hear them in the time of their cry will unto me for their trouble. Imagine God, the loving God, said, Don't pray for them. God got so angry with the antics, with the crime, with the, with the rejection of God, with the rejection of Jesus Christ, with the rejection of the Word of God, falling for God, falling for evolution, falling for everything but what the Bible, the King James Bible, God said, don't even pray for them. America's getting very close to that point. The world is getting very close to that point. There are nations worse than America. China. In the Middle East countries, you cannot bring a Bible into those countries. You cannot have a public evangelism. You cannot have a church. Isaiah 115, and when ye spread forth your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Yea, when you make many prayers, I will not hear. That's God. Your hands are full of blood. A nation that has not executed their murder. When the, when the nation is filled of blood. For God says, by a man's blood, if you shed man's blood, that man's blood shall be shed. God will not hear your prayers. America! In your prison walls, you are filled with murderers. Don't get together as a prayer. You're not listening to the word of God. Daniel said, made my confession. Confession is the knowledge of crime, fault, something to do with one's disadvantage. An open declaration of guilt, failure, debt, accusation. And we're not talking about the Roman Catholic confessional booth, my friend. We're talking about 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Are you guilty of sin? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. 2 Samuel 12, 13. David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. You're going to get a group of people together. you got a group of people to get together. They don't acknowledge their sin. God ain't going to listen. A nation of individuals that do not, are not sorry, and come to God through Jesus Christ, and are not washed. God will not hear your prayers. Psalm 66, 18, if I regard 
iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Get a group of people who are not sorry for their sin, who don't confess their sin, are not washed in the blood of Jesus Christ of their sin. God ain't going to hear you. Don't you get mad at me. I'm giving you the scripture. Oh, Lord, Daniel said, the great and dreadful God. Lord, a master, a person possessing supreme power and authority, a ruler, a governor. This is not the word that people who hate slavery will use. And they'll probably change it in the modern Bible. You cannot obey and, re and rebel not against the civil authority. And you're not going to obey God and his authority. Hey, he's a Democrat. I'm not going to follow him. He's not my president. Then you're not going to follow God. Romans 13. And God's not going to hear your prayer. You see, these prayer means everybody get there. God is a great big prayer bubblegum machine. You put your quarter prayer in a bubblegum machine, and you'll even get what color bubblegum you want. That's the worldly God. He says, great. Is God the great in your life? Or is there anything greater than God in your life? Home, career, marriage, children, wealth, vacation, hobbies, cars, boats, the media, phone, entertainment. Are they greater than God? And you're going to have trouble with your prayer life. Dreadful. Impressing great fear. Terrible. Dreadful storm or dreadful night. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the God of the Lord are true and righteous together. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Good understand. Have all they that do his commandments, his praise endureth forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. There are fools who despise and don't fear God. They're going to go up to God. Oh, God, help our nation. Bless our nation. Give us everything. God, we love and God, we trust. God bless America. Proverbs 8, 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy. Pride and arrogancy, that's America. You don't hate it. That's even in the Baptist churches. I am so proud of my children. I'm so proud of our church. I'm so proud of our congregation. God ain't going to listen to that. Keeping the covenant, Daniel said. God always keeps his word and promises. How about you? Do you do it? Do you keep your promises? Do you, are you faithful? Mercy to them that love him. God. Mercy to them that love him. What about an atheist in the nation? God judges the righteous and God is angry with the wicked every day. You get a group of people together, they're wicked. And you expect God to hear if you have a nation of individuals that do not love God, mercy to them that love him, there is no mercy. You get a group of people together, that don't mean they're praying to God, they're praying to gods and goddesses, and the God in heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the King James Bible is hated. How's your prayer life going to be? you got to love God. Not Allah, not Mary, Buddha, gods and goddesses, animals and humans. You've got to love God. So people, some out there, save the whales, save the manatees. What about save your soul? Yeah. Mercy is a benevolence, mildness, tenderness of heart which disposes a person to overlook injury or to treat offender better than he deserves. We don't deserve nothing. We don't even deserve salvation. We don't deserve the suffering and death and misery of Jesus Christ on that cross. And there are people who say, I got rights, I got rights, I got rights. You got the right to die and go to hell. 
and you're going to walk up to God and with a prayer, give us this, give us that. Ain't going to work. Daniel also says to, to keep, uh, to them that keep his commandments. Now Christians have commandments. Now, we may, we may not be under the law for salvation, but there is much in the law prescribes a proper and right life before God and man. We can't ignore, thou shalt not commit adultery, for it's under the law. Thou shalt not bear false it's under the law. 1 John 3.15 Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and no, and ye know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. We're going to get together. We're going to have national prayer. How many people hate their brother? How many people are going to get together and have hate? I hate my boss. I hate my job. I hate my wife. I hate my children. Sin. Sinners. 1 Timothy 2.15, here's a commandment. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You won't find that in any modern Bible. So you, you got to have the right Bible. You can't have the, 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 the junky uh, Alexandrian Westcott and Hort Bible. you got to have the King James, only King James, by King James 16.11 Bible, no other. So you're gonna have you're gonna pray to God, do you have the right Bible? There'll be people that get together, they won't have a Bible. They got an NIV, they got an RSV, they got uh, uh what's the I can't think of what the the Mormons have. Uh the Book of Mormon, the Watchtower. You're not gonna go to God with the Quran. You take the Quran and put it into a coloring book. That's what you do with the Quran. We have sinned, Daniel said, have committed iniquity, have done wickedly, and have rebelled. As a nation and individuals, we have sinned. Sin is a voluntary departure of moral agent from the known rule of recital and duty. Prescribed by God, any voluntary transgression of divine law or violation of a divine commandment a wicked act, iniquity. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You ask any one person of ten that gets together in a natural means, or, are you a sinner? No, not me. I never killed anybody. I'm good. Iniquity. A particular unorthodoxy from righteousness, a sin or crime, wickedness, any act of injustice. And you haven't confessed this. You haven't put it under the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. And then you expect God to come out and answer your prayers. Wickedly. A manner. Or with motives, designs, contrary to divine law, corruptibility, immorality. That's wicked. That's our thoughts. Rebelled and open and avowed. Relocation of the authority of the government to which one owes allegiance. Or the taking of arms to resist the authority of lawful government to revolt. I'll tell you who that is. That's your American Republican Christian 2020-2021. He stole the vote. It's not my president. Romans 13 says it is. 2 Timothy says you're to pray. Peter says you're to pray. But you don't pray for your leaders. If even if you don't like them, you don't pray for your leaders. How are you going to get together as a national day of prayer when you don't even pray for the leaders? <laughs> oh waiter I like to have a steak dinner but I don't want nothing from the cow 
How about don't tread on me? How about the Revolutionary War? That was just open, outright revolt against England. You know how it was so? If we were lost that war, everybody in America would have been hung as traitors. You know, taxation, no taxation without representation. You know how much you're being taxed today? Neither have we hearkened unto thy servants the prophets, Daniel says. How about today? How about how about the preachers, the evangelists, the missionaries, the teachers of the word of God? I mean the right ones. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints and for the work of the ministry and the edifying of the body of Christ. And there are Christians that are saved that avoid the preachers, evangelists, and missionaries of the word of God in church. Never mind the heathen. There are in Baptist pulpits where there is deceiving, lying. There's fun. There's playtime. Today, for the world, what about churches? They know what the they know what the right churches are. What about signs? What about door knockers? What about the radio? Street preacher, gospel track, a friend, a family, co-worker, Bibles. There was even a time you went into a hotel. There was a Gideon Bible in that drawer. America's without excuse. And when America, God decides that's it, she's going to fall. She's going to fall hard and hurtful. And if you ain't listening to a true Bible-believing, preaching teacher, God ain't going to answer you. You're women preachers. That ain't the Bible. Number one woman preacher, that ain't Bible. It's wrong. God ain't going to listen. And be careful because 2 Corinthians 11, 14 and 15. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore is no great thing if his minister, ministers also transform as the ministers are righteous. As much as God has ministers, Satan has ministers. You got to be careful. Paul says there's another Jesus, another gospel, and another spirit. Daniel also says, O Lord, righteousness belongs unto thee. God is always right. And men are always wrong. God forbid, yea, let God be true and every man a liar. Daniel also said, Through all the countries, whether thou hast driven them, Israel, because of their trespass, that they have trespassed against thee. Judgment happens because of sin against God. David said, only thee have I sinned against. We have got to acknowledge, I've got to acknowledge my sins are number one. They are against the holy and righteous God. And I need to confess them. And I need to have them washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Earthquakes, war, famine, hurricanes, tornadoes, death, illnesses, disease, COVID-19. It's because the sin of the world against God and the world trusts Pfizer. And the world trusts Johnson and Johnson. And the world trusts the media and the news. And the world trusts the president and the CDC. Which is more of a sin. Because they don't trust God. They don't fear God. And we talked about the fear. Oh, Lord, Daniel said, to us belongs confusion of faith. Now listen to me about this one. Confusion, Daniel said. The nation that does not know which sex they are. I don't know if I'm male. I don't know if I'm a penis. I don't know if I'm a female. I'll get you a, a full-length full mirror. And I will put you in a room all by yourself in a full-length mirror. You take off your lower pants. You take off your underwear. And you look in that mirror. And that mirror shows a penis. You're a male. And that, that, that mirror shows no penis. You're a female. Nothing wrong with that. But you're in confusion. Daniel spoke about confusion. A nation that does not know the marriage bed and proper sexual relations. When America has a, a spouse 
step out on another spouse of adultery. When America allows a man and a man to have sex together, legalize it. When a nation allows lesbians, females, and females together. Friend, it's a nation of confusion. When a nation does not understand the life of the womb, go ahead and murder that womb. Go ahead and kill that baby. You got a nation that's confused. When a nation wants to get rid of the police and set the criminals free, you're confused. You're confused. When a nation does not know God, their creator, but they do monkey's uncle in the Big Bang. 1 Corinthians 14, 33, for God is not the author of confusion. I don't know what sex I am. I don't know what I'm supposed to do with the marriage bed. I don't know what kind of sexual relations I'm going to have. I don't know about life in the world. I don't know about the police and all that. Because you've got confusion and that confusion didn't come from God. But you're going to pray. You're going to get the lesbians and the sodomites together and the transgressors together. And they're all going to have a prayer meeting before God. God ain't going to listen. To our kings, Daniel says, to our princes, and to our fathers, the entire nation of people at all levels. This is Bible. Because we have sinned against thee, then Daniel said. It's plain and simple. To the Lord our God belongs mercy and forgiveness. Lord our God, not men or a man, but the man Christ Jesus. Can't be an actor, can't be a sports figure, can't be a president. Not gods or goddesses. Mercies, plural. The benevolence, knowingness, or the tenderness of heart which disposes a person to overlook injury or to treat offender better than he deserves. The forgiveness, the act of forgiving, the pardon of offender by which he is considered a threat as not guilty. I mean, it's treated not guilty. The forgiveness of enemies of a Christian duty. Ephesians 1, 7. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Colossians 1, 14. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. God forgives, not priests. Daniel says, though we have rebelled against him, God, rebellion is a sin, because they have they have not hearkened to my words, saith the Lord, which I have sent unto them by my servants the prophet, rising up early and sending them, but ye would not hear, saith the Lord. Everyone that hears these sayings of mine and doeth them not is, shall be likened to a foolish man which built his house on the sand. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him, it is sin. Daniel also says, Neither have we obeyed the voice of the Lord our God. For today, for today, the Bible says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. People reject it. I preach that in the street. Every Saturday, I go down to the farmer's market. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. People reject it. They won't do it. A couple weeks ago. That's not what my minister would say. I'm upset with you. My minister wouldn't say things like that. And I said, your minister may be wrong. Your minister may be of Satan. For that time, Jesus began to preach and say, repent. Repent's not taught in the modern churches today. You don't have to repent in the modern church, including Baptists. The times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Repent. How many of these people get together for prayer? How many have repented? Yea, all Israel has transgressed thy law, even by departing, that they might not obey thy voice, all nations included. Israel is not the only nation that doesn't listen to God. Therefore, the curse is poured upon us. If it was said for Israel that God cursed Israel for their disobedience to the word of God, what do you think about the nations that don't listen to the word of God? What do you think about America that won't listen to the word of God? Hey, 
judgment must begin first at the house of God, and then to the, what about the heathen? O oh Lord, Daniel says, according to thy righteousness, I beseech thee, beseech is to entreat, to supplicate, to implore, to ask for prayer with urgency. You're not going to do that with one day of prayer. You know, after 9-11 September, when all the church and all the people got together, that lasted about three or four days. Daniel says, let thy anger and thy fury be turned away. God is angry with sin and sinners. God hates the sin but loves the sinners. That's not what the Bible says. There could be mercy. There can be mercy. If we repent. Because our father, because of our sins, Daniel says, and for the iniquity of our fathers. In America, the founding fathers of America were not as clean, not as pure, as holy as Americans make them to be. Oh, our father, fathers, you know, they wrote the Constitution, they set up the government. Many you won't find in heaven. Thomas Jefferson took the Bible and chopped it in pieces, and you got the Thomas Jefferson Bible. It's far, far away from the King James Bible. Benjamin Franklin was not holy. Mount Washmore, you have four faces of sinners. But we have the rock that is in Jesus Christ without sin. Now therefore, Daniel says, Our God, hear the prayer of thy servant. Are you a servant of God? You have to be saved first. Do you serve God to the best of your ability? God's going to hear you. You see, when it comes to the prayer, it's not a group of people together. You can't say, oh, we'll get the church together. You realize there's unsaved people in the church. There are wicked sinners in church. There are people in church that are unconfessed sinners. They may be saved, but they don't confess their sins. You think everybody like that, all are welcome in the church. You think God's going to get, listen, Revelation chapter 3, the, the, the lad to see in church age that we are in today, the church, Jesus Christ is standing outside the closed door. A servant is a person, a male or female, that attends another for the purpose of performing menial offices for him. Daniel reaches out. America is a nation. In God we trust. God bless America. Yet America has many gods and goddesses. The God of the Bible, the nation rejects the Bible. Well, God is the God of the Bible. And if you don't have the God of the Bible, you don't have in God we trust. God is the God of Israel. And the nation that does not set her Israel as the highest priority God ain't going to bless your nation. He's going to curse it. America will sell Israel out for fuel, for oil, for Arabians, for peace. The God that is Jesus Christ. A nation that rejects Jesus Christ and his gospel. There will be no God blessing. This country supports Jehovah Witnesses. And Jehovah Witnesses will tell you Jesus is not God. Well, ain't God we trust. God ain't going to hear your prayer. Not all Americans, but many and most, enter ye in a straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be that go there out. America boasts in her sins, her wealth, her strength, her power, her sex, her education, and her entertainment, but she don't boast in the God of the Bible, the God of Jesus Christ, boasting in sin. There are laws that are against the principles of God and the Word of God. Abortion is legalized. That's not what the Bible says. Sodomite marriages are, are legalized. That's not what God says. There are churches. Again, in Revelation 3.17, Because thou sayest, I am rich, increased with goods, 
and had need of nothing, and knowest not thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. That's the state of our churches today. That's the state of the Laodicean church. That's the state of the church age I am in right now, and you are in, in 2021. They invite and entertain the world. All are welcome. They had the wrong Bible. They lie and deceive from the pulpit. They worship as casual and laid back. They're, they entertained and rather to be holy. They rather have no numbers, head count, than holiness. The men that preach and teach are confused. I've already said, God's not the author of confusion. Friend, that's, that's what it comes down to. The Bible says, pray without ceasing. We ought not just, you know, when the world says, let's get together. The world don't tell us what to do. We need to get right with God. We need to pray with God daily. The Bible says Daniel prayed three times. I believe the Psalms says David prayed seven times. We ought to pray as often as we can. When you're driving down the road, you don't need to close your eyes. You need to open your prayer life. If we only had a prayer life like people have on their phones today. If Christians spent their time talking and seeking God as much as the people today on their phones. If the government ever say, as much as they say, put a mask, get the, get the, get the, uh, um, the vaccine. If the government say, Get God, get Jesus Christ, get the King James Bible, get saved. As much as they say, get the mask and get the vaccine, we would have. You're not going to have a revival. Because every revival that happened under the kings of Judah, the kings of Judah got rid of the gods, got rid of the goddesses, got rid of the idolatry, got rid of the sodomites, cleaned the land up, and sought the Lord God. And got rid of the gods and got rid of the gods. That's not going to happen in America. Because the Constitution says you have the right to worship whatever god you want. Don't you know the Constitution is a violation of the word of God. And hey, go ahead, get mad at me. But go ahead, read the Constitution. And read all 66 books of the Bible and compare the two. Constitution does not mention God, does not mention Bible, does not mention Jesus Christ. We as Christians, we ought to pray whenever we can and for whoever we can with an earnest desire. And we need to realize that God may say no. He may say yes. Or he may say, not now. Now, Lord willing, within time, the I got this on the Word document. These will be added to our webpage where you can download the Word documents. People did not like my sodomy message yesterday. and I'm getting, I had to turn off the comments. People are not going to like this one, but it's Bible. And people don't like the Bible. And if you say amen to these messages, hey, you know what? I, I got to work on my sinful life. I, I got to do more for the Lord. Amen to that. You're angry with this message and you need to get right. 